Good morning, everyone. So, the COVID-19 has taught us many good things. The base is to be a survival expert in a situation like this. And we, the real-time teachers, have learned many new things. This is what doing online classes. This is my first online class for the fourth semester students of ophthalmology of Assam Medical College. The topic I'm going to cover is anatomy of the human crystalline lens. So uh, let us go ahead with the topic. I'm Dr. Arjit Handik of Assam Medical College. So we know the human crystalline is a biological lens that is situated behind the iris, behind the cornea and the anterior chamber. And this is the lens, this optical element which focuses the rays to be focused into the retina such that we can see. The lens is situated behind the iris and iris always touches the entire lens capsule. And lens keeps on changing its shape because of its pliability that is due to accommodation and which we will see later. So if you look at the some of the terminologies like for any lens, there is one anterior surface. This is a convex lens, is having an anterior surface and a posterior surface. The center of the anterior surface is called the anterior pole, and the center of the posterior surface is called the posterior pole. The anterior surface is having a curvature. If you take the average radius of curvature, it is about 10 millimeter in diameter. And posterior surface is also curved, it is more curved than the anterior surface and the radial curvature is about 6 mm in diameter. When lens goes for accommodation, in the relaxed state, the lens is, the shape is different. When it goes for accommodation, actually the posterior surface changes a lot, just the posterior curvature changes a lot in relation to the anterior surface. Equator is the area where the zonules are attached to. And we have, we, we, from equator to equator it is called the diameter of the lens. At birth, it is about 6.5 millimeter in diameter. It keeps on growing and when one becomes adult, it goes up to 9 mm and it remains more or, more or less static afterwards. About the lens thickness, it is about 3.5 mm at birth and it keeps on increasing at 0 0.02 mm each year and it keeps on growing till we die. The lens is somewhat like the hair. The hair keeps on growing till we die and similarly the lens keeps on growing also. And we know the lens is covered by a capsule. This is the, the thickest basement membrane of the body. If someone asks you this is the thickest basement membrane of the body, this is the lens capsule. If you look at the thickness, the thickness varies at different portions. Across the equator, it is about 17 micron in thickness. And anterior surface, the thickness varies between 21 to 14 micron in thickness. Posteriorly, across the equator, it is little thicker. But the center of the posterior capsule is the thinnest part of the capsule. This is about 4 micron in thickness. 
so if somebody asks you this is the thinnest part of the capsule it is the center of the posterior capsule it is the thinnest anteriorly the lens is related to the aqueous humor and the iris iris keeps touching the anterior lens capsule all the time and posteriorly the vitreous touches the posterior lens capsule and the lens sits in a fossa of the vitreous if you consider the vitreous air as a jelly it goes inside in a fossa like this is called the patellar fossa in a simple depression where the lens like my right hand it sits over here and it is having a circular attachment along the posterior surface of the lens this capsule is called the hyoid capsule or the weigel's ligament because the attachment is circular all through 360 degree so this is a circular type of ligament it's not li ligament or something like that is an attachment actually and because the lens sits like this on the patella fossa we have a little amount of potential space here behind the posterior capsule this is called the bulges space the refractive index of the lens also varies because of the density of the lens fibers the refractive index towards the periphery is about 1.38 these are average um, refractive index the center portion is uh, is having much denser because of compacted fibers we will come to know and we will see how it happens this is about 1.43 and in total the lens is responsible for about 17 diopter of its total refractive power that is in your average it keeps on changing due to accommodation this is another diagram in relation to the attachment of the vitreous to the posterior capsule as i have described it attach get get attach into the petal of fossa and it has a thickness the anterior line or the peripheral line is called the agus line the vagus zone and the bulges space behind it we know the lens is suspended by the zonules those are at us in the ciliary body then into the equator from the ciliary body it comes out like a fork three prong fork and this is the zonular fork you can see the level as number 3 the anteriorly we have the anterior zonular limb then equatorial limb and the posterior zonular limb and this zonular fibers get into the capsule and this keeps hanging the lens in position the space between the anterior zonular limb and the posterior zonular limb is called the canal of hanover so let us look at the embryology of the lens we have seen many times how the lens develops at a 4 mm stage when the protein crystalline starts developing in the human embryo it forms the lens placard this is from the surface ectoderm the lens starts thickening up because of the stimulation from the formation of crystalline protein then the optic vesicle that comes out from the neuroectoderm comes out and touches the lens placard thereby making the lens pit and invagination of the lens placard at the 10 mm stage 
it get the test from the surface ectoderm and forms the actual lens vesicle. This is what the lens vesicle is. The orientation is same. Towards the right hand side, I have the anterior part. Towards the left side, it is the posterior part. And it is filled with little amount of fluid. This is a single layered epithelium all around the, uh, I mean, the, uh, al along the capsule. So what happens? The posterior lens fibers get used up to fill up the cavity, fluid filled cavity. And these are the first generation lens fibers. These are the first generation lens fibers. And once these fibers get used up, there is no lens fibers, lens epithelial cell towards the posterior aspect. There is only lens epithelial cell towards the anterior aspect, nothing towards the posterior aspect. Then accordingly when the anterior lens epithelial cell keeps on proliferating, they form the lens fibers at the equator and the lens keeps on growing. We will see how it occurs. Here is another diagram. We can see the lens epithelial cell at the center in the anterior aspect. Posterior aspect there is no lens epithelial cell. Those who were they, uh, there in the posterior aspect got used up forming the initial batch of the lens fibers. But towards the equatorial zone, the lens epithelial cell actually elongates and forms the lens fibers. So, let us see uh, something like this, how it happens. So I have drawn the equatorial zone. Here is the anterior aspect. Here is the posterior aspect. And we have the cells here which keeps on proliferating. The lens epithelial cell keeps on proliferating towards the equator. This is the equator. Towards the equator. These fibers start elongating. These fibers keep elongating and starts losing its nuclei and later on becomes a thin lens fibril which goes towards the anterior and posterior aspect and this is what they are trying to terminate as the bow zone see it looks like a bow and arrow this is what they are trying to describe this is the bow region and where the lens fibers goes anteriorly and posteriorly to get attached with the fibers from the other side, the fibers from the other side, the other side fibers will come anteriorly and will meet each other. and thereby forming this basket. The lens fibers ultimately form a basket that will uh, actually comprise the basic anatomy of the lens. So these lens fibers towards the anterior aspect gather together to form these white sources. You can see the purple color Y 
towards the anterior aspect this is the anterior visusa and towards the posterior aspect you can see the inverted y why this y's are there imagine all the lens fibers has come to a single point what would have happened there would be so much of crowding that the all lens fibers won't get a space to get attached to each other and this won't distribute the force of the lens fibers equally so we may not have a smooth lens in such a condition and this erect and inverted wise are to distribute the this force such that we don't have a tilted lens in one side and this is a very um uh, precise mechanical concept to balance the force of the lens fibers that forms the uh, biological um, architecture this lens fibers keeps forming throughout our entire life the older lens fibers gets compacted and the new lens fibers gets laid down over it ultimately we are having compressed lens fibers at the center which keeps on getting thicker and thicker harder and harder as we is so the initial lens fibers those are formed during embryonic life are still there inside our eyes so this is a immunologically privileged area this don't go away from our body it doesn't have any interaction with the immunological system of our body it remains inside the capsule inside our lens remain compacted more and more lens fibers get formed and this will form the different zones of the lens as you can see the embryonic zone the fetal zone infantile adult zone these zones are something like whenever we cut a tree across we can see different different developmental zones these are like the zones in reality we cannot actually determine which is the adult zone which is the infantile zone or something like that but the architecture is somewhat like this the hardened nucleus the hard nucleus in i'm talking in regard of the surgical aspect surgical anatomy we we encounter hard nucleus only after a certain age say after the age of 50 only we see sufficient hardness of the nucleus otherwise all the lens elements are really soft the next thing uh, i want to highlight is that how the how the lens becomes transparent the rule of transparency is that a tissue is transparent if it is neither absorb nor scatters light can you get it when can you say a tissue transparent the first property is that it should not absorb any light it should not scatter any light in the first situation the lens fibers doesn't have any coloration so it's transparent i mean there's no coloration no coloration is there so whenever there is no coloration no light will get absorbed by the lens fibers the second situation this lens fiber should not scatter light how would it be possible it will be possible when the lens fibers these are very thin fibers about 4 to 8 micron in thickness are closely packed such that the diffracted rays because of small diffraction that happens inside the lens fibers undergoes destructive interference the diffracted rays the the fiber that goes or that that light that goes straight will go straight but those get who get diffracted will undergo destructive interference and therefore there will be no scattering 
this is the principle when maintain the lens remains clear otherwise if the lens fibers get separated is not closely packed together it gets separated lens loses its transparency that what we can see when ever we talk about the cortical cataract the first thing it happens is the accumulation of fluid the fluid separates the fibers gradually the lens becomes opaque so if you look at the arrangement of this lens fibers this is somewhat like this this is a hexagonal this hexagon is also a engineering marvel if you want to pack something together closely most number of thing in a small space the hex hexagon is probably the best architecture it cannot be round if you keep on round things there will be some empty spaces without leaving any empty spaces if you want to pack something together the hexagon is the best way to do it the bees have adopted it our lenses have adopted it the same thing so these are closely packed lens fibers and it remains like that if you look at the top portion we can see the capsule then epithelium the younger cells then the older cells you can see and you can see here the actual lens fibers in under electron microscopy these are what the the lens fibers get arranged and when uh, uh, and and it it under the rays undergo destructive interference among these such that the lens remains transparent something about the destructive interference because i am repeating this term once again and again you should have some amount of basic understanding what is this if you look at the top one if you look here what is happening you can see the bottom portion i want to see you the bottom portion here there are two waves of light they are in phase that means the peak is in concert with the in tune with the peak of the other wave so there will be constructive interference that means this with there will be amplification of light this is called constructive interference what will happen if two same wavelength light two waves goes in such a way one of the peak touches the trough of the other what will happen there will be destructive interference see the top line the light will die this this waves will die this is called destructive interference and this kind the same principle is observed or used when someone tries to give anti reflective coating the anti reflective coating of a lens is same thing it tries to reduce the scatter so a wave from the left what it comes get reflected towards right side you can see one uh ray there so if i if i if i have if i have to draw it something like this way i don't know I was drawing rays in this way i may not be accurate but i shall try so we have we should have the anti reflective coating that should be 1/4 of the wavelength of the light this should be this should be 1/4 of the wavelength of the light then what happens we consider a wave this is where is the wavelength this will get reflected in this way then 
this ray will also go inside and will get reflected from the other surface it will get reflected from the other surface in this way so ultimately you can see this thing that whatever we described in the previous situation with the other diagram the peak will touch with the dip of the other the trough of the other and these waves will undergo destructive interference that means there won't be any reflection here so no scattering no scattering so this is what is the concept of the lens transparency what we can see uh, this is what just i wanted to tell you in brief about the lens anatomy being it a first class i want to restrict here and the stream will come down again and will try to continue on this class in the future and try to modify my lecture depending on the feedback we get from you whether you can hear me properly whether you can see me properly and the other things about the contents and everything uh that's what goodbye stay healthy and take care of yourself thank you